joining us today on Playing the Field. I'm Maria Soraya. Well, the big game is set. We know the players and we've seen the story before. The question remains, will there be a different outcome for the San Francisco 49ers or will the Chiefs win back-to-back -back championships? You know, it was 2020 the last time that these Chiefs and 49ers met in the Super Bowl with the Chiefs coming out on top 31 to 20. Now, Mahomes is still there, but for the San Francisco 49ers, they have Brock Purdy, who was the last pick in the NFL draft just a year ago, also known as Mr. Irrelevant. He's also one of the youngest quarterbacks to ever play in a Super Bowl at age 24. But this has really been such an interesting season leading up to the Super Bowl for our local teams, including the Los Angeles Rams, who did make it to the playoffs and did so much better than anyone gave them credit for. Now, of course, they started the season at 3-6, and six, and head coach Sean McVay said it wasn't until their bye week when they came back and really everything changed. Now, he told us that it was the emergence of wide receiver Puka Nakua and the second year running back in Kyron Williams that made all the difference in the world. Now, I had a chance to sit down with offensive lineman Rob Havenstein, and here is what he had to say about the season. This has been an interesting journey this year, especially for the O-line. If you sort of think back to the beginning of the season, how has it sort of progressed for you guys this year? Yeah, you know, obviously there was a lot of learning curves and, uh, you know, kind of gelling with new guys. Um, I mean, we were, you know, Steve, Steve coming in, being a rookie, you know, can't really get a good feeling through OTAs because it's, your, you know, you're playing in your underwear and so you don't really have a good feel for how people really want to hit blocks. Then obviously with the addition of uh, KDOT and, you know, some injuries that we had in the offensive line, it was, um, it took us a little bit to really get gelled, really, un, you know, truly understand who you're playing next to, how they want to hit blocks, how they see the game, and that, and you know, that just takes time. So, I th but I think we've done a nice job of uh, trying to accelerate that as much as possible, especially in the meeting room, all talking the same language. You know, everyone's here with the same goal. You know, like we we don't have a bad guy in the room, um, and so it's a uh, you know, it's always been a good thing. What kind of a challenge is it when guys move around on the line over time? Is that I mean, is that a is it a positive? Is it just trying to figure out where everybody goes? How does that work? So for a backup, yes, because backups have to play a lot of different positions. Um, depending on who goes down at what game, sometimes, you know, when it rains, it pours, you may lose two tackles, two guards, something like that. A tackle steps down to play guard or whatever it is. For your starting five and who you predict and who's going into that week as your starting five, you want the same for the whole season. Um, so it's... And it's not easy to do playing different positions. I mean, to, for what Joe no, no Boom has done, you know, playing right tackle, right guard, left tackle, like, I, like that's not easy. If you asked me to take a left tackle stance right now, I'd fall over and probably die. So, um, he's almost like the utility guy of the line. 100%. Is and that, you know, he's, he's, I don't want to say an underrated part of the team because everyone does appreciate, you know, his ability to go from side to side, from inside to outside. Um, so it's it's I, I wouldn't call them underrated, but it's just you know it's it's a position that's not usually thought of a lot, but having a you know so the position Joe's in right now is you know having a good reliable solid starting caliber backup is just a you know can't put a price on it. You guys have added um, Coach Mike Munchak this year, who was probably the very best at ever playing this game. What has that been like? What have you learned from him? Man, I picked up so many things from uh, from, from Coach Munch. He's uh, the way he talks about the game. He's very he's very fluent in the way he talks to you because it's he talks to you as a person. It's it's not a lot of you know coach speak of you know hot words or anything like that. He's truly just having a conversation with you and giving you gold because he's you know obviously got a gold jacket so yeah. <laughs> so that's so that's you know that's that's experience that's wisdom that is just that's not around and for him to come in and to be as invested as he is and to sit and talk about football and I've had conversations with him where we we're just talking about life in general and kids and you know whatever it is and so it's um you know just to have a presence a caliber caliber of guy in the room like that and you know hats off to to Wendy for you know you know, coming in, being that, you know, it's it's his first O-line room as, you know, head guy, and there's no ego in there. And so when Munch has a pointer, you know, Munch comes in and 
him and Zach run our third down meeting, and so it's, uh, you know, they're over there talking. We get different guys talking about different things, and everyone's, you know, collaborating together. It's, but, uh, you know, to have Coach Munch in the room has been, you know, invaluable. Have you ever watched video of the way he used to play this position? I've seen some clips. I probably should go back and, you know, and and, and definitely uh, definitely look at some highlights. But, um, you know, obviously everyone knows that he, you know, he's a, you know, one of the best, if not, if not the best to ever do it. I know, I know that starts getting down to some different conversations, but you know, one of the best to ever do it. And then lastly, you know, you guys are going to the playoffs this weekend, big game in Detroit. What's the feeling been like in the locker room? You know, it's been a really good feeling. There's been uh, obviously playoff football. There's a little bit, you know, kind of, I don't want to say a different sense of urgency because we obviously had to have that just to make the playoffs, start starting from three and six. But I think guys are locked in, guys are focused on what we need to do. Uh, I think, you know, our leaders have been leading the right way. It's been coming down from Sean as well. Um, all our position co uh, position coaches, everything, everyone's been kind of on task. And when we're here, we're focused on what we need to do, you know, because all we you know all we want to do is be playing next week. So, um, but, you know, I think we've had a good good week of practice. We're going to, uh, you know, obviously watch the film, clean up what we need to clean up today, and then, uh, you know, travel tomorrow. Kind of interesting, Sean brought that up this week that you guys have been playing pretty much player football, especially at since after the bye week. So maybe the mentality, especially for some of the younger guys, they're just playing like they've been playing. Yeah, you know, I, I know for our younger guys, you know, they don't know what they don't know. You almost have that blissful ignorance. And so, you know, for us to even be in this position that we are, we like you said, we were in playoff football mode for, you know, the second half of the season. But it's, it's not like that was talked about. It was just a focus, a singular focus on getting better, playing better football, you know, limiting the mistakes, but at, at the end of the day, just playing better, competing harder. And that was something that showed up in practice and it's continued to show up. You know what it's like because you've had the experience to play in a playoff game. What kind of advice do you give them or when does it actually stop when you get on the field and you're actually playing? When does that, the jitters sort of stop when you get to the game? Well, I would say it's different for everyone usually. Um, if anyone would come up and ask me, uh, you know, advice with, you know, how to manage nerves. And, you know, I kind of, you know, always brought it back to, you know, the old Hoosiers clip where, you know, you, you go measure the, uh, measure the rim, still 10 feet, you go measure a football field, still playing football. Obviously, it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be an awesome stadium, but, you know, guys have played in, you know, big games in the past, maybe not to, have, you know, this caliber, but. Um, it's the same as the one you played in high school, right? Same game, same game. <laughs> Couple rule changes here and there, and maybe uh, maybe a little bit better uh, personnel on the other side of the ball. But it's um, but it's you know it's the same game, and you know for me it's usually you know once the first snap gets going, you, you know you kind of you know yeah your uh, your senses take over, what you've done in practice takes over, and you just go ahead and trust that. And then if you ever if you ever in doubt, you know that's the best thing about we got to, as this team is that we are a complete team. It's uh you know you trust the man next year, and you you know if you can't do it for yourself, go do it for him. And at the end of each season, we are very familiar with assistant coaches moving on to bigger jobs. That happened again for the Los Angeles Rams as defensive coordinator Raheem Morris was named head coach this week of the Atlanta Falcons. Now, I had a chance to sit down one-on-one -on -one with an exclusive interview with Raheem the last week of the season where he talked about his career and all things football. Raheem, you and I were just talking about how old you were when you first started playing football. You said Pop Warner, then high school, but you only played two years in high school. Yes, I uh, started in Pop Warner. I was about 12 uh, for my late coach, Ralph Steele. Unbelievable man. Played two years of high school football. My sophomore season, my dad didn't let me play. My grades were eligible for high school, but not in his eyes. And uh, he set me out until I can get on the honor roll made the honor roll and he finally let me play football in, in high school and I uh, got a chance to earn a scholarship at Hofstra. Okay, and then you go to Hofstra, you played safety the whole time, is that right? I did not. I actually played corner my freshman year. I moved to safety my, my, during my freshman year because we got a safety get hurt, played safety that year, stayed at safety for a little while until I had to move back to corner in the middle of my senior year because one of our guys transferred out. Wow, <laughs> oh my gosh, so, yeah, so you moved around a little bit. So I just was playing defensive back. When you left Hostra, was the goal to go to the NFL? Because you went to coach right after. Everybody that plays any sort of football wants to go be a professional. You learn pretty quickly that everybody can't do that. And um, getting that harsh reality at Hostra, 
I was around such great coaches and late my late coach Joe Gardy that uh, showed me the way and told me right away you, you need to get into coaching um, because of my feel for it because of the people skills I was a captain on the team and he gave me an opportunity to work with the coaches there and hang out with those guys for a while and I fell in love with it. What was it like your first experience coaching on your own out of school? I, I really thought it was awesome. I was really coaching half my friends. Um, those guys had all had such a belief in me because I was the captain the year before and I was able to give them so much information on the field and then trying to find extra things off the field really gave me an extra motivation to want to get those guys better and better to really have the pride that you wanted to have in Hofstra at the time. You know, that was my school. It was for my coach. It was for the people that gave me the greatest opportunity. And I just wanted to do a great job for those guys. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, fitting in and just the kind of philosophy that you have for football. Everybody, each team maybe has a different philosophy. Do they? Or how does that work when you kind of move around? You know, um, you always have your own philosophy. And you carry those things, what's near and dear and true to you. You know, mental toughness, the physicality and how we want to play, the increased hustle and all those things. And then when you go and you get with like a Sean and you talk about people being first and you add that to a part of your philosophy and you absolutely bring out those attributes in your core to be able to help and provide to that opportunity that you're in, I think is the best way to go about business. So you see different people's philosophy. When we were with uh, Dan Quinn in Atlanta, we talked about toughness, we talked about competing, and I thought that was really a part of what everybody wants to do. And I really think when you go places and you have the ability to add um, to their culture, um, to the ability to make those guys better, I think it's only a chance for us to grow and to be able to do that together. You make so many connections throughout the years. What was Sean like when you first met him? You were both a lot younger. You know, I don't know if people even know. We, I met Sean as a young man in Tampa in his first year coaching with us. And he'll tell you, he came in basically as a, 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 a helper, an assistant, and he, and he had so much energy and so much juice and so much authentic passion in order to get great that I just remember the guy that I knew would, would, would climb his way up the ladder pretty quickly. How quickly, nobody knew, but you knew he would come fast and he knew he would have the ability to do it and you couldn't wait to see him do it and grow. You know? And then I got a chance to go back with him a second time when he started coaching and fill the shoes of a tight end coach. Uh, it was everything that I thought he would be, and it was all that I would hope that he would become. When you came back here with the Rams, it, was he that same guy? Where, what was your, your the connection like then? It was absolutely not. When I came back, I saw a, a real authentic leader. You know, um, you learn how to lead by following. And I thought he did such a great job of following the guidance of whether it was Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan, or, or John Gruden, or whoever he had worked for, or whether it been Jay. Um, that when he got here, he had a real feel on how he wanted to lead. And it started with his dad, Tim McVeigh, yeah. um, that he really takes a lot of his leadership qualities from and what he did in his profession. But when I got here, I got a chance to see all those things come out, whether it had been in team meetings, whether it had been in press conference settings. Um, he's made me better just being here with him. Um, and I hope he feels the same way about me. Um, but we have been able to form those connections and those growths together that are just unparalleled to uh, I hope any other coach can match. It's interesting, when you first came in here, I remember having the interview with you out in the tent, all the media got to meet you, and somebody had asked something about, you know, this was such a good defense, what was it like to take over, and you said you didn't care where it ranked, and one of your favorite things to say is stats are for losers. Tell us about that. You know, it started, it started a long time ago. Um, you go into the locker room after the game, and all the coaches, they get a stat pack. And I remember myself and Mike Tomlin, we never wanted to see that stat pack when we won. And we always said, stats are for losers. It doesn't matter if you got the result that you wanted that day. You don't look at those stats. And it's it just something that resonated with me. And it's not really that you mean stats are for losers. It's about you better enjoy those wins in this league when you get them, because they're hard to come by. Yeah. And when you get those wins, you enjoy them. Now, you go make your corrections. You do the things you need to do necessary to get better. But I mean, stats will always be for losers when it comes to us. And like. That's just the mentality that we got to have. You know, it's not going to be a selfish mentality. There's no room for arrogance in this game. Um, there's no room for selfish type of behavior, whether it comes to being number one in defense or dead last that day. Did you find a way to win that game? Did you find a way to get better that day? And that's really all we care about. So linebacker Jerry Robinson often co-hosts with me. And one of the things that he shared with me was he went to coach for Sarah High years after he stopped playing. And he said, you know, when a kid gets it when you're trying to explain something to him and it clicks he says that you see that light in his eye and in you all of a sudden it's everything you thought it was going to be as a coach because coaches are teachers do you feel the same way there's no question when you feel 
any connection that you have with a guy click for that human, whether it be on the field or off the field, right. to be honest, you feel such an emotional high for yourself. Mm -hmm. You feel such an emotional high for them because 90% of our job is given. Yeah. And when it gets received, it is a, a great feeling. You know, Jalen Ramsey didn't talk a lot, but one of the things he did share with us was Ra is the real deal. He had such a connection to you. Talk about that relationship. I think when you start with guys like that, they want honesty. And sometimes they want brutal honesty. And sometimes they need love. And I think it was the connection that we had to I had a feeling of what he needed in those moments, in those days. And we were always had the connection. I mean, we probably talk m more now um, than we did when he actually was able to come to work here every single day. Wow. And I, I just think that's because of the connection that you make when you are coaching. I think it's the connection that you make when you, when you, dip, when you dig deeper than just the wins and losses. I think you want to invest into the people. And I think that's how you get the best out of everybody. You know, having been on this journey for a few years since the Rams came back here, it's so interesting to think, okay, a couple of years ago, you win the Super Bowl. Sure. But isn't every year a new journey, whether you <laughs> win the Super Bowl or lose it, or you just, you, it's just your season? You know, we kind of laugh about it all the time. We always talk about repeat champions. Yeah. We always talk about defending a championship. Every single year is brand new. Right. Every team you get is brand new. Yeah. Uh, the 53 guys that you have on the roster, they won't be the same the following year. Yeah. They won't be the same throughout the season. And I just think every day and every challenge that we get is a brand new day. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta just attack those things as, as hard as you can. You know, and, and I mean, it's just so interesting because there are just, there's so many facets that go into it, you know, but I think that you're right. A lot of times the media has their buzzwords too, like, well, you know, repeat and how are you getting back up over the hump, things like that. When you think about mentors you've had just throughout your career, probably very many who comes to mind you know I, I always talk about my big three you know and I mentioned him already in this interview Ralph Steele from Pop Warner okay. and that gave me the will and the one to the win Joe Gardy at Hoster and he he provided me with brutal honesty and the absolute telling people the truth at all times whether they needed it or not and then you got to talk about Mike Tomlin and a lot of his stuff had to do with the connection that he had with his players the connection that he had with his guys and the coaches the connection that he made throughout the building and when he stepped in the room everybody wanted to listen to what he had to say and I just think those three guys when you're talking about leadership you talk about the mentorship that I got from people um, those are some of the major three people that has, in my life that has affected me you know what it's like to be a head coach. You know what it's like to be a defensive coordinator. What did you learn the most when you were a head coach? You know, um, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. Okay. I think the best thing about being a head coach is getting the results that you want. Um, the best thing that you get from being a head coach is finding out when you don't get those results who you really are. Oh, interesting. interesting. And I think those are the things that, that, that's, that want you to go back to it so much. And that's the reason you become more helpful in the role that I am now because of that experience as a head coach. Well, I love what you said last year when you told us that there's only 32 of these jobs, defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, head coach, anywhere, and you're one of those jobs. There's no doubt about it. You know, like, you know, you can't spend a bunch of time worrying about your next job. Right. And you lose track of the beautiful job that you have. Yeah. You know, there's only one of 32 of me. Yes. And, and there's only one of 32 of those head coaching jobs. And I think you got to embrace those roles, and that's how you do the best at your job. And that's how you get the most out of people. And that's how you do the best at what you're trying to do every day. That's, that's the way you just go about your business. Not that you're going to give away any secrets, but what's it like to be in that room with those players talking defense? Um, it's a lot of fun. I can tell you that um, because of the passion that you have in the room. When you're out in front of that room and you look into Aaron Donald's eyes and you're looking at Jordan Fuller and you're looking at some of your leaders like Ernest Jones and you're just thinking, what nugget can I give those guys a day to make practice better? Right. Then you have practice, and then what nugget can I do today to help them in the game? And then when you get a chance to get to the game day, and you can watch those guys go out there and do those things, it's that feeling we talked about before. Yeah. It is that over-exuberation of love and care and, and want to for those guys and just happiness, and you just love their moment. You know, it, and the, from the outside looking in, thinking about, you know, you get to be the captain on the defense, you get to do all this just – defensively where a head coach have to, has to kind of do all of these roles all the time. You don't really get to do that deep dive, do you? You do, because uh, you're nosy. <laughs> so, <laughs> that means you never sleep, right? So we, I do, I do, and I sleep well. But it's about the connection, right? You make the connection with those offensive guys. You make the connection with special teams. You make the connection with the coaches. 
And when you have those connections, when, when you're out there in the grass and you get those moments, those brief moments that come by and you don't know when they're going to come, you're able to act and you're able to add on and be able to helpful. And I think that's an important part of all our jobs. See, I'm just trying to talk him out of it because we don't ever want him to leave the Rams. We love him here, that's all. <laughs> it, it, it's nothing like a fist bump from Matthew Stafford yeah. saying good job. Right. And, or, the, or vice versa when he's coming off the grass. And, and, and those connections, you know, are special. Those things are, are really cool. Lastly, when you walked in here and you learned all about the we, not me mentality, that fit right into where you already were, right? You know, it's, it's so funny because uh, Sean and I had spent so much time talking about these moments, right? I had just been fired from Tampa Bay. I just got back with him in Washington. We'd go on vacation together and sit there and talk. And he would talk, take notes, read, gather his information, and it fit right into everything that we had talked about over the years. And it's really developed into what we have right now, this great working relationship and friendship. And I wish Raheem Morris all of the luck and success in the world. He is a very, very special person, and I look forward to seeing you down the road. And speaking of comings and goings, it was the year 1999 when then quarterback Jim Harbaugh played for the San Diego Chargers. Now fast forward to 2024, now head coach Jim Harbaugh is announced as the head coach for the Los Angeles Chargers. He was announced at a press conference at SoFi Stadium, and here is more. And we're in, uh, we're in you know, one of, the, one of the great cities there, there is. Um, you know, and one thing I know is, is uh, Los Angeles, Southern California, uh, they respect talent, effort, and winning. And, um, and it needs to be multiple multiple championships uh, and that's we're going to be hum, humble and hungry uh, but you know that's our goal that's our goal is to um, you know treat people in a first class manner to win multiple championships uh, and day by day you know now I'm quoting Jackie Harbaugh now I mean gonna be one day at a time one game at a time one play at a time it's going to be a team effort there won't be any uh, any magic formulas um, the only ones I know are just good old-fashioned hard work and uh, teamwork. And that's the vision that I've uh, received from the Spanos family. Uh, that's the guidance, you know, that this, is, this has to be done. This has to be done like a team. Uh, and, and the great family that they are, team, family, those, those are synonymous um, you know, for each other. Uh, and I, I got to quote Katie, my daughter Katie Harbaugh. Uh, because she came up with one of the best quotes I've ever heard. Uh, work together, win together. Uh, and the operating word there is, is together. Uh, so everything we're going to do is going to be done as, as a team. Collaborative, um, you know, anything and, and everything uh, that, that I can do as a coach, um, you know, for our players, it's, uh, it's about them, those, those, helpful, those helpful warriors, those those uh, uh, mighty men uh, so that they can be successful. So um, I feel that that's what my job is, you know, put them in a position to be, su to be successful. Um, and, and, and then the other operating there is work. I mean, uh, nothing was ever achieved without, uh, without work. So each day, just waking up and see if we can, uh, how productive we can be, how much we can dominate the day. So what, Talk about expectations. What are those expectations? Expectations are to, uh, to have a great day today, you know, to make it a great day. Uh, like some people say, like, have a nice day. That doesn't quite resonate with me. I mean, that, that leaves something to chance. I mean, we can, let's make it a great day. You know, let's have a great day if we want to. Uh, and so that's, that's what we're doing. And i um, happy to be here today and um, again, just thankful for, for this opportunity and, and ready to attack it. The, the pros um, on this team, uh, Justin Herbert, you, you, you know, you see, I mean, he's a, as well said on that video, I mean, that's a, that's a he's a crown jewel uh, in, in the National Football League. Uh, Derwin James, there's another one. Uh, talk, talk about somebody getting me fired up. I mean, I mean, let's go. You know, Justin Herbert walks up on you, you know, like, 
<laughs> okay, all right. This is awesome. Keenan Allen, you know, we got, uh, you know, we got guys. Uh, uh, Rashawn Slater, I mean, great to see, see him, I mean, in the, in the building, uh, you know, get, getting the work in. And that's, that's been, the, that's been uh, what I, the feedback I've been getting in the communication with the players. Uh, they want to work. Uh, can't wait to work. They're ready to work. And, uh, and they want to win. And uh, hey, that's, uh, let's go. The uh, weight room is, we're getting it cleaned up right now. We're getting it, uh, getting it all set. Had a great day uh, uh, just yesterday. I mean, talk about fulfillment. I mean, going, to, going in there to Home Depot and uh, you know, getting the shop back. And uh, I feel like I'm back at USD. I mean, let's get this thing right. Let's get it good. When these players come in here, then uh, everything's, everything's organized. And they're going to see that uh, yeah, things, are, things, are, things are changing. Things are different. And uh, we want to get into that center of player development, you know, that, uh, that weight room. And let's, let's have at it. You know, it's a, you hungry, you want to eat? I mean, this is, a, this is an all-you-can-eat buffet right here. So let's get that work in. And uh, that, that's, that's what the players uh, have been saying back to me. You know, let's get it, coach. So, uh, yeah, let's go. I mean, it's going to start with, I mean, humble and hungry. I mean, right there. I mean, that's, that's where we are right now, humble and hungry. And we're going we're gonna to respect all our opponents. And we're going we're gonna to strive that, uh, you know, we're going to earn their respect. And uh, we're going to earn our winning, um, you know, tough team, you know, the resilient team, a relentless team, uh, physical team uh, is what we're going to aspire to be. Don't let the powder blues fool you. <laughs> That's what we're going to aspire to do. Now, if I go back to 1998, well, that was my very first year covering professional football. We'll see if Jim Harbaugh remembers me. And I can tell you it's going to be a very exciting year with Coach Harbaugh at the Chargers. All right, that will do it for today's show. Remember, you can watch Playing the Field 24-7 at playingthefieldtv.com. And as for my prediction for the Super Bowl, well... I think the San Francisco 49ers are going to pull it off this season. And that's all the time that we have. Thanks for watching. I'm Maria Soreo, and we'll see you next time.